Hello. In this problem, we have what is called a concurrent force system. So pragmatically, it looks like we've got some type of a ring connector here and that we've essentially connected two cables uh, to maybe some eye bolts, some supports up here. And from that, we are hanging a weight from a third cable. Okay, so we'll see in a minute that this will turn out to be a concurrent force problem. Uh, but for now, let's read the problem description and then jump into it. So it says a load of 40 kilonewtons has been applied to cable CD as shown. And it's giving us a cable diameter of 15 millimeters. And we are asked to calculate the average normal stress in cable BC. That's this one right over here. All right. So we need to think about average normal stress. Our equation is sigma equals n over a. We can get that area of the cable really easily because we've got the diameter given to us in the problem. And to get the amount of normal force in the cable, we'll just need to do a little bit of statics to figure out how much internal tension is traveling through that cable. Now, how do I know it's tension and not compression? Well, number one, life experience. Number two, looks like a cable. Cables can't. Um, uh, cables cannot transfer compressive force. Um, number three, statics analysis, right? So in order to counteract the effect of that 40 kilonewton loads pointing down, I'm going to need to have tensile forces in these two inclined cables for equilibrium. So we're going to work here on the average normal stress, and then we'll come and read the second part of this problem right after that. And in order to do the statics, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to zoom in right here. Maybe zoom out just a little bit. OK. And I am going to turn down that layer temporarily and add another one. And what I see here is that I want to cut a free body of this node. And I'm just going to draw it as a big solid circle and put a C in it so that I can you know, model that particular part of this structure as a particle. And the reason why that's OK to do is because I'm not interested in this, you know, how the stresses are transferred inside that ring. I'm only interested in this cable over here. And that's, that's why I can simplify the statics analysis. OK, what are my actions on C? Well, in the free body, I'm going to remove the bottom cable, replace it with its effect. I'm going to detach this cable, replace it with its effect, detach this cable, replace it with its effect. And just because I know I'm going to need this in just a second, I'm going to make a note to myself that this 60 degree angle is going to be um, important here momentarily. So I'll just kind of move this over to the side like that. OK, let's get rid of the picture behind for now. And OK, so we've got um, two unknowns. And let's use symmetry to our advantage here. And so because both of these cables are inclined at these 60 degree angles, that means that because I've got this line of symmetry right here, Right, that is my line of symmetry of the structure. I'm going to have symmetric forces in those cables. Now I can actually use a symmetry tool in this particular Autodesk sketchbook um, piece of software that I'm using right now. So what I've done is activated this symmetry tool and what I'm going to do, I'm going to lock that into place and then I'm going to turn it off so I don't have to look at it. But um, I'm going to use that tool to break these vectors down. And what I want to do is it's going to have a vertical component here. 
and I'll have a horizontal component that's also symmetric about that line right there. And all I'm doing is kind of breaking that vector down into two components. And that dash line is a little, I always call this a, a bounding box, a bounding box um, to kind of represent the idea that I'm taking a vector and breaking it down into two pieces. And what am I going to call these vectors? Well, you could, you could go crazy with the subscripts here if you wanted to do so. Turn my symmetry off for a second. Um, so I could call this like force in member BC, or I could call that tension in member BC. Um, but I'm just going to simplify that notation. I'm just going to call it T for tension. How do I know that it's de tension definitively? Well, it's just because the arrows are pointing away from the body. And in this problem, the body in my free body is that ring. That is the point of view. Okay, so these forces represent the actions of components in the system on that ring modeled as a particle, a point in space labeled with the node C. All right, now that I've got this simple notation, I will call this T sub X, pop in a Cartesian planar coordinate system. There is T sub Y, there is T sub Y, there is T sub X. Now at this point, the fastest way to solve T is to recognize that both of these ty's are identical and they sum to 40 newtons. So t sub y is equal to 40 divided by 2 equals 20 kilonewtons. Let's put that into the diagram. And at this point, I don't even have to solve for T sub X. Now, usually when I assign this to students, what they do is next they solve T sub X and then finally solve T using the Pythagorean theorem. But I can use fundamental trigonometric identities to simplify that. Now, there's many ways to do this. This is the way that over the years I have found is the easiest. The idea is you go back into your geometry. And if I give this triangle a hypotenuse of a unit length of one, then the tall part of the triangle, that's going to be sine of 60, opposite leg from 60. But I've memorized that for a 30, 60 triangle and I know that's equal to 0 0.866 or 86.6 percent of one. The base I know that that is equal to 0 0.5. So those are the sines and cosines of the 3060 triangle and to finish this problem out I just want to use a relationship of similar triangles. So here's how I would set that up. This triangle is similar to many of these triangles, but I will pick, let's see, what's the one that's least confusing? I'm going to just pick this one, okay? And I want to do a ratio as follows. I want to say that the hypotenuse force vector is to the hypotenuse length vector as the vertical force vector that I know is to the sine of 60. That's kind of my basic process. So if I was writing this out the long way, I would write it like this. I would say that the force vector T is to 1 as 20 kips vertical vector is to 0 0.866, which again is the sine of 60 degrees right there. Okay. 
And so then calculate your time, 20 divided by 0.866, and you will get a tensile force of 23.09 kilonewtons. That's accurate to four sig figs. Let me redraw my rectangle. There we go. Okay, so we know our tensile force, so we can get back to stress here. But before I do that, I'll tell you the way that I would do this kind of as a seasoned veteran. I would solve for this tensile force without putting pen to paper. And I know while you're learning this, obviously, I encourage you to write out all the steps. I encourage you to show your work. But as you gain fluency with these types of calculations, here is my stream of consciousness, consciousness calculator operation that I would do. I would take my 40 kilonewton force, divide by two to get my 20 kilonewton vertical component. I would divide by that length, and that's going to give me my tensile force here. So there are ways to kind of use these similar triangles in very fast, efficient ways to get the information that you seek. All right, all of this, all of the static stuff um, allowed us to calculate the tension in that cable it, to four sig figs, it's 23.09 kilonewtons. So I'm gonna hide this and kind of get back to business. I'm gonna have to go back into my layers and get rid of a lot of stuff. Turn this one back on and zoom it up to max. Add a new layer, and now we're ready to finish solving the problem. All right, what were we doing? We were trying to calculate the average normal stress in cable BC. We're going to use this equation, and we're going to say average normal stress sigma equals a normal force of 23.09 kilonewtons. That's divided by an area. Now, what we want is just the cross-sectional area of that cable. So the length is completely irrelevant, the length of the cable. Um, and we know the diameter. And I'm. this is a personal preference. And I know some of you prefer to solve for area of circle in the form of diameter, not radius. I tend to just convert things into um, radii and just go from there, personal preference. So I'll immediately be like, okay, the radius is half the diameter, it's 7.5, area of a circle is pi r squared, so pi times 7.5 millimeters quantity squared. As I'm kind of scanning the units, there's something else I'm gonna do right here. I know that units of stress are typically megapascals for most common engineering materials, or KSI, those are really for your ferrous materials, for your ductile metals and such, some weaker natural materials, let's say we had wood fibers, sometimes those will be in PSI, um, but megapascals is the right order of magnitude for just about everything. And I know that a megapascal is defined as a Newton per millimeter squared. And I wanna compare those units to what I've got going on over here. And I see that I need to do a unit conversion in the numerator. And I like to preload correct units. I've had great success over the years minimizing mistakes by preloading correct units. So I could take one kilonewton, note that it's equal to one E3 newtons in the numerator. I, I just multiplied by unity. And so I'm going to cancel this out. Now I've got newtons per millimeter squared. That is in megapascals. So I will crunch this through my calculator. I will get to four sig figs, 130.7 megapascals. And to purport a final answer to three sig figs, I would call that 131 megapascals. Since it is a tensile stress, you'll want to either use a positive value to communicate that stress, or the little t in parentheses will do the job as well. This is the best way. This is the way that I would prefer that you um, report these 
answers, um, but some of this is a personal preference. So there are not hard and fast rules oftentimes, just um, good ways to express ideas and other ways that are not so great. 